Coming to you live from the Black Goat 39 Studios, this is the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. Now here's your host, the Guru of Sports, and Derek B. There's always technical difficulties here. Um, I'm sorry. The the, the uh, audience ain't clapping today. Uh, only because it's been a lot of stuff going on. And I just want to say hello, sports fans. And welcome. Welcome to the Guru Talk. Ah, here they come. What's going on? Y'all better stop clapping. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing here? Anyway, I want to say thank you. Thank you for tuning in. I am the Guru Talking Sports, and I'm actually flying solo today because my co-host with the co-most, Mr. Derek B., is still working, and I just wanted to get in and get out and talk to you guys about what's going on in the world of sports. We had a lot of stuff going on. Um, I got a lot of stuff to talk about this week, and also I wanted to let you guys know that next week, next week, it'll be Guru Claus hosting this show along with Derek B. And I just want to tell you guys that I really appreciate you tuning in and listening every week. And, um, you know, just come in and just have a good time. Um, like I said, I'm flying solo today. Derek's not here. But uh, Kaden Guru is not here as well because you know that Catering Guru has his stuff to do, but my assistant is also here. He's Gody. Gody, how are you today? All right, Gody. I got. I'm putting a lot of responsibility on you because you basically going to have to carry the weight here for a little bit. Can you do that? All right. Anyway, Gody's here, and I just want to tell you guys that um. This is episode 43 of the Guru Talking Sports Podcast. And, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on. And um, I wanted to tell you guys that, you know, I got a few subjects to talk about. I'm going to go through the picks of the week. And um, I don't understand. Well, TAPS is going to be like two segments today because we lost a lot of people this week. And um, I'm going to have to talk to you guys about this because... Uh, some of it, uh, one of one of these celebrities hit home, and um, like I said, I do. I have a lot of people that you know I ran across through the years, and basically, uh, one person in particular I want to mention, Mr. Tiny Tommy 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 Tiny Lester, passed away on the tenth, uh, which was uh, Thursday, at the age of sixty-two, and. Um, Actually, I got a funny story to tell you about Tiny. Um, everybody knows him as uh, Debo from the uh, movie Friday franchise and um, with Ice Cube and um, John Witherspoon and Chris Tucker. All these guys are, you know, really, they made this movie series funny as I don't know what. Um, Tiny played uh, Debo, like the... Uh, the neighborhood big guy, and um, which was far from what he was in real life. Um, I got a chance to know him a little bit, and like I said, I used to work and live in Los Angeles, and it was funny because, like, I'll tell you this story right quick. Tommy used to come into the uh, Foot Locker where I used to work at in Baldwin Hills uh, Mall uh, years ago, and, you know, he would come in and you know, he would just joke around. We would BS all the time. It's, if you know what BS means, um, I'm trying to keep this show clean. Not like I did last week because I went off on Michigan. But 
he used to come in all the time and, you know, being a celebrity, it didn't phase him at all. It basically, he came in like one of the guys, you know, and like I said, I met a lot of different people in my time, you know, from Warren G to, you know, a lot of different hip hop guys, Ice Ice T, or excuse me, I never met Ice T, I, ne I never met Ice Cube, I met Easy E, I met um, a couple other people, Dr. Dre, um, MC Ren was really, really good dude, and, um, you know, I still kind of tweet him sometimes, and, you know, but the thing about Tiny Lester, he was a big dude, and big, muscular, and, you know, very intimidating, but he was far from that, he was very, very nice, very, very respectful, and always, always made us laugh when he came into the store. I remember one time he came in and he said, uh, oh, man, I, man, give me some shoes. And, you know, I said, Tommy, sit your big ass down and get let me get you some shoes, man. Don't worry about it. You know, make light of the situation. He was he was really, really a great dude. And um, when I found out he passed away. Actually, I found out yesterday on Friday and um, I was really shaken up because like I said, you know, those moments that you spend with people, you know, maybe you might not know them a whole lot, but then again, some people that you run across and then, you know, you kind of get to know a little bit and meet you, you have, you know, it's, it's, it's something when they pass away, you know, so it kind of touched home for me, and um, like I said, I, I really, you know, just appreciated the time that I spent with him, and, you know, it was only a microsecond, but, you know, in my life, but the thing about it is that, you know, you know, much respect to him, may he rest in peace, my brother, I appreciate you, and um, my condolences go out to his family. Like I said, this is, uh, it's been a very hard week, and, you know, a lot of people, uh, when I run down this list, you're going to say, wow, this is really crazy. Even with a, a a celebrity just passing away earlier today that I found out about. And, and like I said, I had to make taps of that too. But first of all, I want to say thank you for Mr. Ray Guru for the musical introductions. We had a long conversation this morning. And I told him that, you know, I really appreciate what you do for the sh for the podcast. And thank you for everything that you do. You know, sometimes you just have to tell people that you love them and that you appreciate them. And I just, you know, wanted to tell him that because, you know, we talked about uh, Tiny Lester. And we talked about, you know, just general things. And the first thing I always ask everybody when I first talk to them, how are you and your family doing during this time? It's very, very hard, I know. But the thing about it is that we all have to make it through this. And hopefully that this vaccine is going to cure things and help things and make things better. But I just want to say to you guys out there, just protect yourself. Don't take this as a joke. This is not a joke. This COVID stuff is real. And believe me, uh, for a couple of these people on this list, I think COVID took maybe several of them. But anyway, let me get back to the uh, program. And first thing I want to do is go to opening arguments. Uh, Kaden Guru is not here, so I'm going to have to do opening arguments myself. I'm going to bang the gavel three times to opening arguments. Right, Goaty? All right, opening arguments are now in session. I have the floor because I'm here. And um, usually, like I said, Derek Guru has the floor most of the time, but with, with his absence today, I'm going to take over a couple things. Um, first of all, I want to say big props and a shout out to Miss Sarah Fuller. Today, Vanderbilt did score, and um, she scored two extra points, which is the first time a female has ever scored in a FBS football game, major college football game. So Vanderbilt, uh, I don't know, I, I can't remember if they won or lost, but I just want to say, Sarah Fuller, we, we respect you, and good things come to those, you know. And I heard her interview this, this week, 
on a, a radio station and I, I heard that she you know she's very 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 good at what she does and she's a very down-to-earth young lady and I really appreciate you know what she's doing to show that you know football is not just a guy's sport women can play this too I mean not go out there and you know play defensive tackle or linebacker but you know they did have women uh, football leagues and you know, like I said, I, I really think that is a really, really good step for maybe having, you know, some of the college teams put young ladies on there as kickers and punters. I think it's a good idea. And like I said, Sarah Fuller, you have my big props and congratulations on um, scoring in a football game. Um, well, it didn't go so good for my uh, Navy midshipmen today. They got blanked by the Army in the 121st annual edition of the uh, Army Navy game, Navy Army game, I call it, because I'm a Navy guy and I'm going to say Navy Army first. But I'm not mad when they lose. I'm not mad when they win. Uh, it doesn't matter because the thing about it is that it's for the country. And I really appreciate the dedication that these guys go out and play with because they defend our country. And like I said, speaking from a, a, you know, a subject that I know about, I'm a former Navy uh, battleship sailor, and I appreciate the work that the Navy and the Army and all of our services, armed forces do. So I would really want to say thank you for, you know, that. And I'm not really happy about the score. We didn't score. Navy hasn't played good this season, and Army is doing very well. And Army has their last game, I guess, against the Air Force. And um, I guess I'll root for both teams as well. Because, like I said, it's not just for, you know, football's sake. It's for country's sake. So, I appreciate them. Um, now, we're going to... Oh, speaking of uh, college football, um, the Big Ten did the right thing in putting Ohio State in the uh, championship game to get them to their sixth win. They're going to face Northwestern next week. And um, because, you know, I told you that, you know, Michigan punked out and didn't want to play because guess what? They was scared of getting their asses kicked again. Excuse the expression. But, you know, like I said, it just goes to show that, you know, the conference did the right thing to put the best team in because, if they didn't put Ohio State in, do you think they would put Indiana in the championship game? Indiana, yeah, they got six wins, but guess what? They lost to Ohio State. Ohio State has five wins, and they haven't lost to anybody. So you're going to have to put the team with the better record, you know, even though that Indiana's played one more game than Ohio, or, you know, a couple games more than Ohio State. They're still going to have to put Ohio State in the championship game because they're the best team in the East. Now, like I said, Maryland, nah, they, Maryland has no shot of, you know, making the, you know, the championship because one, Maryland and which fan base, or which, you know, program is a little bit bigger. Let's, you know, get it right. Ohio State's a little bit bigger. They hold a national audience and basically – Ohio State, you know, will represent the conference in the college football playoffs. Uh, believe me, uh, there's no way in the hell that they would put Michigan in there because Michigan is terrible. Penn State had a bad year. Um, who else in the Big Ten do you think should go? Iowa? No. Northwestern? Well, if Ohio State beats them next week, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to go. Believe me, they're not going to go. So you're going to have to put Ohio State in there. All right, basketball is back. Basketball is basically, um, I'm watching right now, I'm watching a couple uh, different games, flipping around, taking a look at a few games, and basically they, they're back. You know, I know it was a short, short off season, but guess what? The Lakers took care of business last night, and they beat uh, the Clippers. And, hey, what do you expect? Lakers are going to be a little bit better this year. Like I said, different team. A few more elements to help them 
probably, you know, go back to the finals. I'm praying that they can, knock on wood. But anyway, I would like to see uh, my Lakers do pretty good. Also, another team that I follow is called the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Now, Kyrie Irving had a problem this week because he said that he's not talking to the media because the media is a bunch of pawns. Kyrie, your job is to talk to the media. Believe me. Don't start this mess because, believe me, you will get, you know, just kicked out of this. You have to talk to the media. That's their job. Their job is to write about the basketball players and teams and franchise and coaches, etc. They're supposed to do that. Kyrie, that's their job. Your job is to play basketball and talk to the media afterwards a basketball, after a basketball game or doing media session and, you know, I don't understand some of these players, but like I said, you know, some players have their own agendas. Some players do their own thing or whatever. But like I said, Kyrie Irving, you basically uh, kind of missed a boat on this one. But like I said, even some of the, you know, guys that have bad games go out and still talk to the media. You, that's your job. You have to do that. So I don't know what's, you know, what's up with you, but, you know, you definitely have to talk to the media. All right, now, since I covered those little things, I'm going to go into the picks of the week, and basically, I'm just going to pick what, you know, what I think, and like I said, you know, Derek B isn't here this week, so 9-5, and five, he did last week, which isn't too bad. He did pick the Washington football team beating Pittsburgh, and that was one of the big, big, uh, big ones on the agenda from last week. Now, that that game was really, really good. And believe me, uh, Pittsburgh was set for a letdown. And basically, they did let down on that game. Um, some of the other ones that we both picked together were, uh, we all knew that Green Bay was going to beat Philadelphia. Philadelphia's in trouble. Uh, believe me, they had no, uh, no business uh, even trying to, you know, go out there and trying to play against Aaron Rodgers. Um, the Jets. Oh, man. What can you say about that Jets game? Other than, uh, you know, one coach got fired, basically. Um, I don't know. I have never seen this before. And um, some, of the, some, some of the people that I listened to this week said that it probably wasn't the coach's plan, the head coach's plan, to run an all-out blitz and have three guys covered in the back in the defensive backfield. Now that was the most. Let me see if I can say this right. Dumbass move I've seen in a long time. Believe me, everybody knows that at the end of the game, what do you have to do? You have to prevent the defense. Prevent. The offense, excuse me, prevent the offense from scoring. So what do you do? You put like 10 people back, maybe rush one guy or so, and basically everybody knock the ball down. No, what did they do? They left little Lamar Jackson, not the Lamar Jackson, the quarterback, the cornerback Lamar Jackson up against Henry Ruggs, and Ruggs hit a, you know, made a big time play. A 46-yard touchdown pass from Derek Carr to win the ball game. And believe me, that fired Greg Williams right there on the spot. And you know what? Adam Gase, we can say a lot of things about Adam Gase. We know that he's not going to come back next year. But the thing about Adam Gase is that he did have a lot of sympathy. And he did say that, hey, look, that wasn't something I wanted to do. You know? And it fired Greg Williams. Greg Williams has a history of doing dumb shit, excuse the expression. But the thing about it is that, hey, look, you got you got the lead. You basically don't want these guys to score. What do you do? You put the guys back there. Knock the ball down. Intercept the ball. Prevent a Hail Mary. And what happened? Ruggs caught that ball and ran like the devil into the end zone. And he got in. And basically, that's how the Raiders won. 
believe me, I'm a Raider fan, and I basically almost had a heart attack when I seen this going on. But to tell you the truth, I seen this play when the Jets scored. I was like, what in the hell are the Raiders thinking? They're going to be the first team to lose to this 0-11 team or so? Gosh, man, come on. That scared the hell out of me. But, like I said, I was a little bit better after I saw, you know, Ruggs catch that ball and get into the end zone. <laughs> All right, now, like I said, we're going to do the picks. Of, I'm going to do the picks of the week. And now this is Guru and Derek B's picks of the week. Week, week, week. Okay. Now, Derek B isn't here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the picks. And like I said, I'm going to put my my reputation and my record on the line for Derek B right now. All right. The first game is Green Bay versus Detroit. Green Bay is the second best team in the NFL. I don't see them having any problems. Detroit got lucky last week and they beat, you know, they won their game. But like I said, Green Bay is the the, the big dog in that division. And believe me, they're going to keep on rolling until they meet up with uh, New Orleans, probably in an NFC championship game. Uh, give me Green Bay in the nine points. I think they'll cover Green Bay at nine. I'll take them. Okay. The next game on the docket is the Tennessee Titans versus Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville was only maybe... <laughs> A couple seconds away from getting the first pick in the draft. But uh, they're going to lose out the rest of the season. And believe me, they've been playing hard. But they just can't find any wins. I'm going to take Tennessee in the seven and a half. Tennessee will win that game. Next ticket. Next one on the ticket. Dallas versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, the way Dallas has been playing, I don't think that they have no shot. But then again, Cincinnati has been playing hard, even though they don't have Joe Burrow. They still can do some damage. I'm going to take Cincinnati in an upset. Believe me, I think Cincinnati at home can win this game. Next on the docket is Arizona versus the New York Giants. Arizona is a two-point, two-and-a-half point favorite. Um, the Giants have been playing good. But the thing about it is that Arizona has been struggling down the stretch. And we don't know the severity of Ky Kyler Murray's shoulder. With that being said, the Giants have been playing good. I'm going to take the Giants. Give me the two and a half, and I'll take the Giants. Okay, the line on that Dallas game was Dallas by three. I think Cincinnati can cover that. Next game is Houston versus Chicago. Chicago is terrible, and we all know it. They are who we thought they were. And believe me, what would you say about them, Bobby Knight? I like to refer to this whole thing from start to finish as a real Mickey Mouse operation. Yeah, they are a Mickey Mouse operation, and believe me, I don't see them winning any more games this season. Not unless they play Jacksonville, which I think they do have to play Jacksonville. That might be a game that they will win. But give me Houston in the point, point and a half. I'll take Houston. Carolina is a three-point favorite over Denver. Denver uh, hasn't been, uh, they've been up and down. They didn't really show up against Kansas City last week. Give me Cleve, uh, sorry, give me Carolina in the three points. This is an interesting game. Tampa Bay versus Minnesota. Tampa Bay is a six and a half point favorite. Minnesota has been playing pretty good. If Dalvin Cook can get that running game going, and like I said, Thielen is back. Jefferson is back. And Jefferson is looking good. I like Minnesota in this game. I'm going to go with Minnesota. Give me the six and a half. Minnesota will cover this game. Next up is the Probably a big game, a really big game. Uh, Kansas City is going into Miami. I like Kansas City, but give me the seven and a half points. 
I'll take Kansas City to win, but give me the seven points for Miami. Okay. Indianapolis is a three-point favorite going into Vegas. Uh, after what I saw last week, I'm very, very nervous. But I think, give me the three points, and I'm going to take my boys, the Raiders, to win this game. To tell you the truth, there's not too many teams on here. I look like most of the, all these teams are basically the road teams are favored in these games. Um, this one is going to be very interesting because Seattle is very mad and very upset because they lost to the Giants last week. And guess who they got to play this week? They're a 13 and a half point favorite over the New York Jets. Now, in this game, watch Jamal Adams. He's going to go off. He's going to be very mad and said that he wasn't being utilized in New York and he's being utilized very much in Seattle. I'm going to take Seattle and the 13 points. You can't. This is a this is like a gimme. I I know this is a big big spread, but believe me, give me the 13 and a half. I'll take Seattle. Hopefully they won't have a letdown like they did against the Giants last week. Uh, Atlanta is a two-point favorite over the Chargers. What happened to the Chargers last week? 45 to nothing. I still can't understand how they played and basically what did they do. I mean, I don't understand how can you have, how can you have basically three situations where you have different mismanaged players on the field for punt or punting. I don't I don't get it. Um block kicks, punts taken back for you know, I don't know. They I don't know. I, I guess I got something to say about that. It's just that they I'd like to refer to this whole thing from start to finish as a real Mickey Mouse operation. Thank you, Bobby Knight. I you said it perfectly because believe me this is a real Mickey Mouse situation in, in Los Angeles. Um, I'm not calling for Anthony Lynn's head right now, but the thing about it is that they have te they have players on that team that can play, and I know that they are a lot better than what they showed up with last week. I'm going to take the two points. And I'm going to take the Chargers to win this game. I know this is a reach, but I'm going to say the Chargers are going to win this game. Give me the two points, and I'm going to take the Chargers. Now, the next game on the docket is pretty simple. New Orleans is a seven-and-a-half-point favorite over Philadelphia. Let's talk about Philadelphia for a minute. Now, after they won the Super Bowl in 2017, Eagle fans were telling me this is a dynasty. This is one of many. We're going to win it all every single year now. And basically, they haven't done uh, to the point, uh, not really nothing in the last couple years. The problem ain't Carson Wentz. The problem is not Carson Wentz. The problem is Howie Rosen. Howie Rosen is basically sat back on his laurels, and basically, you know, him and Jeffrey Lurie are really tight. But the thing about it is that they just basically didn't do what they were supposed to do. If you're a dynasty and you think that you got a chance of winning, you got to go out there and pick the best players. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, was available when they picked up Jalen Rager. Okay. Jalen Rager hasn't done nothing this season. Believe me, I had him on my fantasy team for a second and I dropped him because guess what? The guy's not doing anything. Uh, Justin Jefferson is probably going to be the rookie of the year this year. And guess what, Philadelphia? You guys haven't been doing what you're supposed to have been doing. So, <laughs> believe me, I don't understand where you're coming from. So, I'm going to take New Orleans and the seven and a half points. Now, New Orleans looks pretty good. They're, they're the best team in the NFC. And Taysom Hill has been playing really good. And 
Basically, last week we seen he's not just a runner. He can throw the ball. He had a couple touchdown passes. He looked good. Give me New Orleans and the seven and a half. San Francisco is a three-point favorite over the Washington football team. Now, Washington can go two for two, and I think they basically can. So give me Washington and the three points. Here's a really good one. Buffalo versus Pittsburgh. I'm really high on Buffalo, and believe me, Buffalo has been really, really proven to me. They've proven to me that basically they can play with the big dogs. Now, they beat Seattle. Good win. They had some very, very good wins. Tennessee, that win was really, really big. And believe me, they jumped on them. And, you know, well, I'll take Buffalo in the two points. Believe me. Okay, the last game on the docket is Cleveland versus Baltimore. Give me the two and a half points for Baltimore. But two and a, Baltimore is a two and a half point favorite. I'm sorry, but hey, I, I, Cleveland is Cleveland is really good. And they're dangerous. And basically, they can jump on you early. And I'm going to take Cleveland in this game. I'm sorry, Derek, but I got to take Cleveland in this game. All right, we're done with the picks. And like I said, we're going to have to go to taps. And this has been, like I said, a very, very hard week. And believe me, we lost a lot of people this week. Now, here's taps. But first off, we got to say goodbye to Ray Perkins. Ray Perkins was on a 1971 Baltimore Colts team, uh, Super Bowl V, and he was a Super Bowl champion. And he also coached Tampa Bay to New York Giants, and he also took over for the legend Bear Bryant in Alabama after Bear Bryant left. Also say uh, goodbye to Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager was uh, the fastest man, broke the sound barrier in 1947, October 14th, 1947, and he rest in peace, and he was actually the uh, inspiration for the movie called The Right Stuff. Now, we're going to play Taps back again because, like I said, there's a lot of people on this list. And we just got through two of them. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, Natalie D. Reed. She was 53. She played in BAPS. And she played in a few other movies um, alongside Holly Berry. We got to say goodbye to her. Dick Allen, one of my childhood uh, idols when I was growing up. 351 home runs. A 292 batting average, 1,119 RBIs. Dick Allen was 78 years old. And like I've mentioned before, we mentioned Tiny Lester, but we're going to mention a country legend, Mr. Charlie Pry, the first black man to ever be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. A pioneer in the country music scene, and we have to say goodbye to him. He was 87. Like I said, TAPS is uh, the military uh, military version of uh, saying goodbye and going home. But uh, like I said, this was a very, very hard week for me. And because, like I said, when I heard about Ray Perkins, it uh, only thing I could think of was Super Bowl V and the Blunder Bowl. Uh, when I heard about Mr. Chuck Yeager, I remember the movie The Right Stuff. He was basically uh, one of the characters mentioned in that. Um, Dick Allen was, uh, like I said, one of my childhood uh, baseball players that I used to love and follow. He was a great, great home run hitter, and he was clutch. Um, Tiny Lesser, like I, I mentioned before, he passed away, and um, that really shook me up. And Charlie Pry, I remember him. Um, you know, like I said, not too many songs that I do remember of Charlie Pry. 
But I do remember Charlie Pryor was, you know, when I was growing up, was the only black man I knew that was singing country music. And, um, you know, like I said, anybody can sing anything. But the thing about it is that Charlie Pryor, you know, set the standard for uh, country music. And, you know, you got to give it up for uh, Darius Rucker. Darius Rucker is going to be in the uh, Country Hall of Fame one day. So, like I said, Taps, we have to say goodbye to those people. It's been a rough week. And um, God rest all their souls and be with the Lord. Now, I got a couple more minutes I got to finish up. And um, I want to tell you guys that um, next week, like I said, next week is the big week. It's the week before Christmas. And it's actually the last show that we're going to do before Christmas. And that's coming to you on the 18th. Because Christmas Day is on the 25th, which is that Friday. And it's the next Saturday after that is the 26th. So can't do uh, Guru Claus, can't be here on the 26th. He's got to be here. He said he's going to be here probably a little bit uh, before Christmas. And um, Goaty, I want you to make sure that he's not drunk, okay? Goaty will keep him in line because the thing about Goaty is that you know, he does, he does uh, act right when Goaty's here. Right, Goaty? All right. Now, we got to finish up and say, uh, I want to give out some shout-outs first. But I want to shout-out to uh, Miss Bella B in Calgary. She always listens, and I really appreciate you. Um, my man Coop is Stan and the peeps that over at the EE. We appreciate you guys for listening and tuning in and you know, driving and basically uh, being safe, always be safe out there. Um, Miss Jody Martin, always, I, I'm sorry I haven't mentioned you, but, you know, Jody Martin is a really, really good friend of ours, and um, she basically is a Kings fan, and she's a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I'm sorry that I didn't pick Dallas, but I think Cincinnati's going to upset them this week, and we know that, you know, Dallas has been going through a very, very hard time, right? Um, my man, Dale the Diesel, I got to give him a shout out because he's basically uh, the co-owner with me in the uh, 20 team fantasy football league. Um, I'm in the 16, I'm in the 16 and 20 uh, fantasy football league and he's doing well. I think he wrapped up the uh, number two seed or so. I wrapped up the top seed in the 16, and uh, good luck to you this week, and good luck to all the guys in the uh, USFL 20 and 16 Fantasy Football Leagues. I got to say uh, shout-out to Ms. Mayor Petrelli. I hope I said that last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't, but I want to give shout-out to you. I really appreciate you. CC, I appreciate you too. Uh, my man Jeff in Southland. Oh, man, you went off on that dog, man. <laughs> you know you went off on that dog. All right, man. Hey, but be safe, man, and I'll talk to you soon. My man, Cousin Aaron, I appreciate you. He always does his thing on Facebook. And like I said, you know, I'm going to give you guys the particulars in a second. And then we're going to get out here. We're going to do some uh, do some music. And then uh, we're going to wrap up this thing. Um, you guys can follow me, like I said, on on the social media scene. I'm on YouTube at the Guru of Sports Show. I'm on Facebook at Guru's Daily Shorts, IG, the Guru OS39. And also, I wanted to mention that I did put up a new uh, a new site. It's called Guru's Kids D A E Guru's Kids D A E. And that is basically uh, uh, D-A-E, I'm sorry. It's Daisy, Alex, and Kate, and uh, Ellie. I'm sorry, Kate and Guru is not, he's one of my kids. But these are dedicated to my um, my little dogs. I love my little dog so much. And um, every time I look at Daisy's picture, I, I start to feel a little uh, sad because of her passing. But the thing about it is that I wanted to dedicate something to my animals. And like I said, I'm a big animal component, uh, you know, guy. And I love my animals. And be kind to your animals. They love you. 
unconditionally. I come home sometimes on a bad day, but they're always there to, you know, make me feel better. Like I said, on uh, Gmail, I'm at gurusdailyshorts at gmail.com. Twitter, I'm at go 39 on Twitter. And Goaty, he's at blackgoat 39 on Twitter as well. Now, follow us on the social, on the uh, podcast formats. Spreaker is our main vessel. Podchaser, Spotify, the podcast app, Deezer, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addicts, CastBox, iHeartRadio, uh, GeoSovin, Podomatic, and the big one is Apple iTunes. We appreciate you and thank you for uh, giving us that opportunity. All right, got to give big props to my man, Damian Adams. This week's podcast is outstanding. I listened to it. It's great. Jeff Duarte, the big cheese over at Cali Sports News. I appreciate you. I'm sorry that I have a hard time writing about the Chargers because they, they're not doing too good. I got to give it up for my um, hip-hop guys. Mr. Danny Revere, Mr. Jeff Shepard, Reggie Reg, King Charlie Prince, my man Positive K, Happy the Original Pioneer, and my main man, Cool Kyle Sarchow. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Um, we're going to be doing something pretty special pretty soon. Um, credits go out to Mr. Katie Guru, executive producer and board op. He's not here. My man, Vinny V, executive technical advisor. Mr. Ray Guru, musical director and engineer. Dante Guru, show advisor. And thank you, Dante, for getting those uh, uh, Jordan 11s for me. I appreciate it. Mr. Derek Guru, the co-host with the Comos. We're sorry that we couldn't get with him this week, but we'll, he'll be back next week to keep the Guru calls in line. And like I said, this has been a Black Goat production for Black Goat Entertainment. Copyright 2020, all rights reserved, and we don't steal from anybody. All right, I got to get out of here, but I'll tell you guys, have a great, great football Sunday. And I will see you back here in a couple of weeks. And like I said, that damn fool, the Guru Claws, will be here next week. You guys take care of yourself, and we're going to leave you with some Mark Knight. And I love this song. This basically is com coming up. Some new stuff. It's new stuff. I really like it. Check it out. It's Mr. Mark Knight. You guys take care of yourself. Have a great time. We'll talk to you very soon. The Guru will talk to you real soon. I'll see you in a couple weeks. That damn fool Guru Claus will be here. Make sure that he does right. Later.